This video is brought to you by Squarespace. The other day I was driving around and it was around sunset and the sun was going down and I saw Tom in his garage. He was like woodworking or working on pottery or something like that. And lately I haven't had many nerves when it comes to asking people for portraits. So I just decided to go for it, parked, went over there, told him about the project. And he was a little bit iffy on it at first, but he came around to it. And I ended up taking quite a few portraits of him. And this first one was on Portrait 160. And I liked it because he was kind of in between the cars and you can see the flag in the background and the lighting was good in the background, but um, I wanted to get a little bit closer. So I took the second one of him just leaning up against the car. And I like this one because it kind of really focuses in on him and it allows you to get even a shallower de depth of field, which I really like with 4x5. And obviously I wanted to get a headshot as well. And I went in for like a head and shoulders type headshot. And I took this one with him looking uh, directly at the camera. And at that point, I was like already blowing through three sheets of color negative film and we know Kodak prices aren't getting uh, any cheaper anytime soon, but I wanted to shoot on TMAX 100 as well so I could actually print in the dark room. So I took this first one of him looking at the camera, just like the color shot. And then for the second one, I knew I had pretty much all my bases covered with everything else. So I wanted to get a little bit closer for this last one. And this is the one that I actually decided to print in the dark room, and it's probably my favorite one out of the bunch. When you get super close with that Zenitar 135, and you use a little bit of movements, a little swing on the eyes, you can really get a very distinct 4x5 look, which I love. And T-Max 100 just shines in this situation, and I love the way that it looks. I love how little the grain is, I love how sharp it is, and it just prints really well in the dark room as well. But. increase in popularity of NFTs. Um, it's just pushing me further and further into making physical prints, prints you can hold, prints you can tear, prints that you can write on, send in the mail, things like that. Um, if you don't know what NFTs are, it stands for non-fungible token and it's art that's invisible and it exists on a server and people sell it for hundreds, thousands, sometimes even millions of dollars. If you're thinking that I don't want to get into that space, you're wrong because obviously I want to get into that space because you can sell your artwork for thousands of dollars and all you have to do is upload it. Traditional fine art spaces, it takes you years, 5, 10, 15, 20 years to get into that space in order to sell your work for lots of money. Everyone wants to make money. I am not saying that it's bad to want to sell your artwork. Um, I don't think the idea of N NFTs is that dumb. It's kind of dumb, but... Um, Obviously, it's a way for people to sell their work, so I am all for that. Um, the thing that is holding me back from entering that space, that community, is the space in the community and the way that people go about business. Um, there's a lot of things that I don't like, that it, it comes off very uh, fake, very pretentious, and it mostly has to do with people advertising their work, advertising um, what they're selling, because from what I've seen, the only way to be successful in that space is to talk about what you're selling all the time, talk about what you're buying, talk about um, if you sell something, you'll buy something in that space, you'll reinvest in the community, um, talk about post your shit down below and I'll pick two or three people to buy artwork from. But I'm to the point where I'm just about to throw my shit out there and just see what sticks on the wall because um, of course I want to make money. And I just wish more people would say that in the space. I wish more people would just say, I'm putting this out there because I want to make money. I'm putting this out there because it's hot right now and I'm trying to get my work sold and I want to make money off my work. And I mentioned as well that I didn't want to shoot too much color negative film because it is expensive and I only ended up shooting three sheets of that because of the price. Um, it's around five to six dollars per sheet of film, which is 
crazy, but as you all know, in January, it's going to get even more expensive. And I didn't want to talk too much about this because there's other people that have made uh, way better videos about it and have way better opinions on it. People like Nico, who made a video about the history of Kodak price increases. And then you have like William Sheepskin, who goes at it from more of a cultural aspect because he lives in South Africa and he's already been dealing with Kodak price increases um, before this next one in January. But the way that I'm looking at it is I've only been in film for two years. Like I said, I don't know the history and everything. I don't know how cheap it was before uh, digital came out and things like that. There's three options that I have that is gonna suit me the best. And one is I'm just gonna be more selective about what I shoot. And that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shoot less film if it gets more expensive. Um, two is you could stop shooting film altogether, which I personally am not go going to do because I love shooting it too much. And then three, you can do more work to be able to afford more film. Those are the only three options that anyone has. And complaining about it online, I don't think is one of them. Yes, you can be upset about it. Yes, you can be mad and you can be bummed out that you won't be able to afford more film or the same amount of film that you usually shoot but I don't feel like complaining does absolutely any good. I'm sure Kodak wants to continue to make film. Their whole entire company and business model was around photography and making film. So I honestly feel like they want to continue to do it. They're not trying to bum everyone out and make people mad at them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot less. Um, I'm probably gonna shoot my Pentax 6.7 a lot less, and I'm just gonna shoot the pictures that are important to me. And that's the way that people did it back in the day. Um, important occasions would be on film, important occasions would be captured, and that's the only thing I can do. Uh, so that's my opinion on that, and I'm sticking to it. So if you can't stand the NFT space like me, then you're gonna need a website to sell your work online, and for that, I use the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I use Squarespace because they make it easy to present your work using their professional portfolio designs. You can display your projects in customizable galleries and add password protected pages to share private work with clients. Squarespace also supplies you the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. And lastly, Squarespace has powerful blogging tools to share photos, videos, and recommendations to the people that view your site. You can categorize, share, and schedule your post to make your content work for you. Go to squarespace.com slash Brian Burks. Use the code Brian Burks to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. When I came across Jeannie's car, I actually came up to the house next to it and knocked on their door. And he said that it wasn't his car, it was his neighbor's car. And I was a little iffy on going over to her house because she did have a gate and a very long walkway and it said beware of dog so i didn't want to get attacked or anything but i just said fuck it i'm going for it so i knocked on her door hello Hi. i uh i knocked on your neighbor's door because i saw your wonderful car sitting oh, out there okay. yeah uh -huh. and uh i'm brian by the way i'm working on a photo book about classic cars and oh. their owners oh, I see. yeah and i was wondering if you would be interested in standing for a portrait <laughs> in front of that car right now yeah oh god <laughs> Can I put, change my clothes? Oh uh, yeah, up to whatever you. I like. I personally like like natural stuff, okay. but it's totally up to you whatever you want to wear. But so this first one, yeah, I'm gonna have you just stand right there, okay. and then uh, it takes a little bit. I'm gonna have to reposition this, but it takes a little bit to focus. So okay. just try to be. Just hold still. Yeah, I'll try to talk to you a little bit to try to keep you entertained. So how long have you had this guy? I ended up taking her portrait and I liked this first one, but I didn't necessarily like her positioning. But at the time I was like, it's probably okay. Um, I liked what she was wearing. I liked how the bandaid was on her arm, which her husband said to keep on because he thought it was funny. Um, it just added a little bit of character to her. And I took the second one and it was a little more of a portrait, a headshot again perfectly fine photo but not exactly what I wanted 
So we started talking after that and she mentioned that she was a dog groomer and she has multiple dogs herself. And she had this poodle who was 14 years old and dying of cancer and her name was Mamba. And she's like, can I get a portrait with her? And I was like, of course. So she brings out the dog and we ended up taking this portrait and it was probably my favorite one out of the bunch for sure. Um, I am always about adding character and different dimensions to photos and little stuff like the band-aid and the sandals and the shirt she was wearing. All that adds to the character of Jeannie. And when she brought up the dog and she posed with the dog, I think that added a whole nother level of character to her. And that's when I thought that the, the photo just all came together and I liked it a lot. And I took some Pentax shots after this and going back to what I said about film prices and being selective and shooting less, um, these are the shots that I probably wouldn't have taken and I shouldn't have taken because I get these back and I'm just not really that jazzed about them. And I don't know if it's just medium format in general or I'm just kind of the Pentax is losing its luster, but just not really impressed with these shots and I'm just leaning more and more towards large format. So we'll see what the future has for the Pentax, but as of right now, I'm just like not really that excited about shooting it. So who knows if I'll have that in the future, but uh, yeah, loved the four by five shots and uh, really enjoyed my conversation with her. And then afterwards, it turned out that she was a photographer herself and she actually brought out some prints that she printed in her own dark room um, 30, 40, 50 years before. And they were all on 35 millimeter film with a Nikon and Tri-X film, which was really cool. And you could tell that she was pretty happy about being able to show that to me. And I was standing there and I was taking my time with everything. And every time I picked up a new photo, she was telling me the background on it and who it was and why she took the photo. And you could tell she was just really happy that I was there to look at those. And that's the beauty about photography. That's the beauty about film and meeting people and conversing with strangers and meeting people you don't know. You never know who's gonna be a photographer. You never know who's gonna have a story. So all I can say and all I can do is make these videos and let everyone in on the magic of photography, the magic of film. And I hope that is what pushes more people to take photos, pushes more people to shoot film, to slow down, to be selective, and really cherish the moments that you have with people and cherish the conversations that you have with people because it really is magical and I really enjoy um, everything that comes along with photography and shooting film. So, wow, I got super deep right there. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It was really good to get out and take some portraits. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything, just let me know in the comments and thank you all for the support and thank you to the patrons that support me as well. It means the world to me. So I look forward to making the next one and I'll see you guys then. They're just kind of artsy fartsy, but that's what I like. No, I love them. That one's falling apart, it looks like. <laughs> I'm sure mine will look like this too. And there's a dog that laid on the kitchen table. Nice. <laughs> so roughly, oh. 71, 1971.